brothers and sisters, Brother John, Watchmen for that great day. Um, I felt like I have to bring this information to you because it's something that I'm thinking of. And my brother Donnie Donnelly had uh, talked about this yesterday and brought it to my attention. Um, I heard about this, but I haven't really paid much attention. But now I'm going to read the article and I'll post the link in the about box after the video. So World Health Organization is preparing vote to strip the United or the US and 194 other nations of its sovereignty and give them total control of the world. Now this was posted 21 days ago. Just interesting number 21, 21 zero America, and I'm just bringing it to uh, the table now, yet 21 days ago. And it's all interesting as it uh, always relates 21 days to uh, Daniel, the prophet, and um, our brother. How, how do you like that? Our brother Daniel. <laughs> well, 21 days, that's how long he. Um, was by the river and then Angel Gabriel came to him and told him the vision. Well here's the article brothers and sisters. On May the 22nd the World Health Organization, the WHO, will vote on whether or not to strip 194 countries, nations, including the United States, of their sovereignty. Now just those opening words right there, there's something that's going to be voted on to take away sovereignty from the world and put one power in charge. That's pretty amazing. Let me go on. As part of the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Goal. There's another world power or group or organization, the World Economic Forum. We've heard all this and this is all just going through my mind so I know you've heard enough to listen and, and what I'm going to say is directed by the Holy Spirit. And also because Brother Donnie Donnelly brought it to my attention. So the WHO, the World Health Organization, is aiming to alter a treaty. When you look up alter uh, in a definition, it talks about changing, changing, um, let's see, I'll, I'll bring it back to that spot if I can. No, it's not going to cooperate. At any rate, all right. A treaty, a formal, uh, a formally concluded and ratified agreement uh, between countries. Now, George Bush, George W., brought us into this um, this treaty. Now I'm going to read on, and would and that would give them global control over human health. Now this is the way in. This is what the the um, the COVID was all about. The, the WHO, World Health Assembly, will vote on the issue from May the 22nd to the 28th. If you go 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Notice it's seven, seven days. I've always thought that there's a possibility of us getting a seven-day warning. Well, here is something that if we look at it this way, and I'm not saying that that's the seven-day warning, but it's just interesting that it will be for a week. It starts on a Sunday. It ends on a Saturday. All right? Ends on a Sabbath. All right? And then the, the article continues. A new video, which I have posted on my community uh page there in my channel. Uh, Pulse's Joe Marie Mar Martino interviews 
Sabna, this is another video. I'm sorry, I didn't post that, but I will. Uh, in fact, I'll put the link to this, and you can read this and get the video. A member of the steering committee. Interesting when they have these big organizations and they have these groups, and they're called steering. Well, that's exactly what they do. They steer the vehicle to go where they want it to go, to, to uh, achieve the final outcome, right, of the World Council for Health, who points out that the treaty gives the WHO, World Health Organization, an inordinate amount of power to make decisions to sov uh, in sovereign countries as to how people live, that's a big one, how people live and how they deal with pandemics. So it's not just dealing with the sicknesses, but how they live. Your health is important to them, okay? Because how, you know, what you're going to do for them. From lockdowns to mandates over treatment. In an open letter on the WHO's pandemic treaty, the World Council for Health writes in part. The proposed, now this is the World Council for Health, don't confuse it with the World Health Organization. All these different groups, okay, but this is what this group, World Council for Health, uh, wrote. The proposed World Health organization agreement or treaty or you could say covenant think about it is unnecessary and is a treaty and is a threat to sovereignty and in a and inalienable rights it increases the who's suffocating power to declare unjustified pandemics imposed uh, impose dehumanizing lockdowns and enforce expensive, unsafe, and ineffective treatments against the will of the people. The mark of the beast will do that, will it not? It will cost the people more than money. Uh, it will be unsafe and unsafe because you will be separated from God if you take that mark. Anyway, it's the usual Marxist one-size-fits-all approach. Everyone will be on the same page and science will cater to global political whims. It will cost millions of dollars or more and money will be laundered by them and their pickpockets. The WHO appears to want to push the treaty through quickly without public participation and input. It is undemocratic, it is unconstitutional, and therefore it makes the treaty invalid and unlawful, Muhammad says. That's the head of this uh, group, uh, World, the World uh, Association. World Health Association, not World Health Organization. <laughs> it can get confusing, brothers and sisters. All right. So he says, or, I'm sorry, it's a she. Muhammad says, she also made note of many, of the many, who health policies, um, failures due to their conflicts of interest. It is much worse than we thought. The rule change includes very dangerous amendments, 13 of them. Notice the number, 13. 13 is depravity and um, devastation, destruction, judgment. 13 is not a good number in most cases, especially in this case. 13, they're going to change 13 of the rules or amend them. Investigative reporter Leo uh, Hoffman reports that these amendments will not require approval by two-thirds of the United States Senate. It's not called a treaty. Uh, it's amending a treaty we are part of. Now, with that said, let me just continue by going to chapter 9 of Daniel.
927 and read something and he shall confirm the covenant with many many what nations many nations many peoples nations and tongues who is it that sits right on the waters the whore that sits on the waters right and what are the waters peoples nations and tongues all right so we have 194 plus uh, nations of the world that this thing will cover so he shall confirm whoever this he is all right he shall confirm it could be that we're looking at the fourth beast on the earth because it it is going to devour and stamp on the residue and it is the in the days of these kings when that fourth beast rises that the Lord God our Lord God will set up his kingdom so he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week we know is seven years and in the midst of the week we know that he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate now what's interesting about the word confirm and we've heard this before I'm sure you all have the word confirm shall confirm gabar or as uh, J.D. Farag says Girbar Girbar <laughs> is it, it means its meaning is to prevail to strengthen so it's interesting that it is strengthening an already existing treaty the one that George Bush brought us into which was through the TTP or TPP TPP trans Pacific Partnership um, and it's also to make greater or strengthen or make stronger be powerful be mighty be great so if they're going to do this you see to confirm to give strength to confirm a covenant make stronger a covenant you get it is this the Daniel 9 27 vehicle See, because we've all been looking for a peace treaty, all right? What is going to give the power and the strength to an already existing treaty? Think of that. An already existing treaty that has to do with health. Now, we've seen an example of what happened in the last two plus years with what they did worldwide. So now we're talking about the World Health Organization being an entity of its own power, being able to control further in all countries around the world once there's an epidemic or whatever, okay? But they will have sovereignty. They will take the, uh, the lead in any uh, outbreak or anything so it, it's a world government entity whether it is um, uh, remember the beast has many facets so this is one of its major facets when it can take control by one entity one organization built of many people see but out of this is going to rise you know who the Antichrist so it's only a, a matter of time brothers and sisters and you and I and those who are waiting for the Lord Jesus from heaven to call us and to blow the shofar <laughs> that day is near it's near for us we're not waiting until if they should um, if they should pass this thing it's just going to give us a more uh, uh, narrow time field to watch okay so let me continue a little bit here if they are approved as submitted by the United States by a simple majority of 194 member countries of the World Health Assembly countries, these amendments would enter into force as international law in just six months. Six months. 
Yes, six months. Six months from 21 days ago. Well, no, actually six months from the time they vote on it. If they, if they vote on it the 22nd through the 28th. But it's interesting that that's 22nd through the 28th is a seven day period. How long was it before the rains came and the floods came and took them all away that the Lord said it would yet be seven days to Noah? Could this be a seven day warning? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this. There's a lot happening and the beast is quickly, quickly, quickly rising in front of our very eyes. And it's not a time to be complacent about what is happening. We're seeing it. How can you be complacent is what I... How can you even not see that the Lord Jesus Christ is close to coming to get us, to take us away? All right? He has to come before this beast can rise. And we're seeing the beast, you know, setting up. And, and we're seeing, uh, you know, like things popping up here and there. We know what's going on. We're not uh, blind to what's going on. So that puts it around November, all right? If they vote on it in May this right now the 22nd interesting may 22nd <laughs> 22nd to the 20 i mean come on brothers and sisters 22nd to the 28th our administration is actively destroying the constitution uh, our administration is actively destroying the constitution by making us part of a global new world order that's by the writer of this piece it essentially which is true it essentially wipes out 194 nations' sovereignty, says investigative reporter James Roguski. Mr. Roguski has a website with information at don'tyoudare.info. This gives us one world government, government in an instant. Brothers and sisters, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. The time of the UNGA, the UN General Assembly meeting uh, for the nations, starts September the 13th. If you go back just a few months, you've got somewhere around June. We're all looking at, there's many people looking at uh, Shavuot, all right, uh, Pentecost, all right. That's June the 6th. We're all watching at this point for what's going to happen by the end of May. I am. I'm watching whatever's going to happen between now and the end of May. I just wrote a letter to Brother Stephen Dexter, and I appreciate his timing. And what he has done is brought us mostly to June. All right? Anyone that has, saw, has seen his videos, and I still uh, always refer you to go and watch Brother Stephen Dexter's videos because they are so awesome his timing considerations and the, the calendars and all of the things and the parallels that happen on these particular times. So without further ado, I'll just tell you, go watch Stephen Dexter, all right? His videos, parallels, uh, and, and it's, it's a great thing. But that brings us to the end of May. June the 1st, as he says, would start the, the tribulation timing. There is a window, if we should be here the 1st of June, there is a window between the 1st and the 24th or 5th of June. There is a window. But if we are here after June, then we don't know according to the Psalms 90.10 because Israel, the fig tree generation from the 25th of June, say, Right, if we're here, the 20, say the 26th of June, if we're here then, then it, it, it doesn't leave enough time. I mean, I just got the thought that maybe Christ, Jesus said that for the elect's sake, he would shorten those days. So maybe that is shortening. I don't see how you could shorten the seven years. But the time of it, and it, even in Revelation, it talks about, uh, uh, a third of the stars will not give their light, and a third of the moon, and a third of the sun for a third of the day. So there, that in itself, in essence, could be uh, taking away the, the hours, but yet the days go by quicker. So it's, instead of it being a 24-hour day, it's a 16-hour day. That could be what Christ Jesus meant, you know, our Lord meant by 
for the Alexei we shorten those days, all right? Because it's actually in um, Revelation chapter 8 where it talks about that. I forget exactly what what uh, verses, but basically it talks about the sun and the moon are smitten and the stars and all that, and it's a third and a third and a third and, and a third of the day, a third of the night. So you take that and into consideration. You cut 24 hours down by a third, you got 16 hours. At any rate, this is very important. Uh, go to the website. I'm going to post this this uh, article in the about box. I already posted it on my community page. It's important. We're watching. We're waiting. I love you all, brothers and sisters. I know that times are tough. Believe me, I know. If anyone knows, I know. My whole life has changed around. I don't have the same um, ability to do things that I used to do. You know, because I had all the hours. I had eight-hour days. I was able to do my work, make videos, read and study and do all the things. But now I rely and count on you, brothers and sisters. I count on you sending me videos and, and sending me emails. So please, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, I love to email people, and I, I do get a lot of emails, but I try to uh, uh, send the emails back. I always reply. I always try to reply. Um, but thank you for the things that you've sent me before, email-wise, brothers and sisters. I, I appreciate every single thing that I get. And you're all, my, you're all so important to me. Important. In my life, in this, in, uh, for this channel, for, for this Watchman for That Great Day channel, for the life of this, this ministry, all right, you're all a blessing to me. So... Continue to watch and remember God does not give us a spirit of fear the closer we get brothers and sisters to the timing Right as we're seeing that day approach and what's going to happen the 22nd to the 28th Be not afraid the Lord has conquered all whatever they're going to try to do whatever they say they're going to do Just know in your heart of hearts. That he's coming to get us. All right. And don't worry so much about the actual uh, uh, day that he's coming we're going to be watching for those days we're going to be praying that they come and we can see the possibility of sooner than later All right? I don't believe that we're going to be here for the summer I pray not I pray that we're out of here by the before June All right, before June at this point if we find ourselves here on June June the 1st specifically and wake up on the 2nd of June then we have to continue on, we have to continue to watch, but it'll be only a few more days because we're all watching those people at least now that are looking at Pentecost. So it, it's a continuing watch, it's a continuing walk as long as you're with uh, the Lord Jesus and none of us are perfect, none of us. We all fall short, we all have our issues and problems with sin. This is the sin that so easily besets us at many times, brothers and sisters. Just know that the Lord loves you. Just know that he saved you when you were yet a sinner. Are we perfect because we're saved? No. So look up. <laughs> trust him with all your heart. And get ready to hear the sound of the shofar, which hopefully we'll hear very soon. Take your earbuds out. you brothers and sisters brother John I just got so blessed by blowing the show for I love you all I'll see you soon John see you in the heavens out